Well, glory to God. Good to be with you once again, Brother Jim Davis, coming at you one more time from Cornerstone Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Bless God in heaven where Jesus is Lord. Like I always say, he's Lord anyway, but we acknowledge yes. him as the King of Kings yes. and Lord of Lords, and we give him all the glory and honor that's due to him in this house. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> yeah, Pastor Matt, Pastor Matt, he's, uh, he's been traveling, and me too. He just got back from uh, Nepal, and uh, that he was in the air while I was at Kingsway Fellowship International, the Southeast Regional Conference, and uh, I believe I was bringing the word of the Lord when Pastor was trying to get back into the States after being over there for several weeks in Nepal. And so we've both been busy, and uh, I like that. Amen? And so I want to say to our viewing audience, too, uh, missed you, because uh, we also had a a tremendous revival um, with Brother Sean Strong. Amen. And boy, did he bring a strong word. He sure did. And I really bonded with him. And I got to meet him actually at Kingsway because he was one of the conference speakers as well. And uh, what a cool guy. But man, talk about an anointing. When, it, when, you, when he gets that microphone, he gets behind the, this podium, he gets behind the Word of God. Bless God. And the Word of God gets behind him. Look out. Praise God in heaven. Can everybody say it? Amen. 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 You know, revivals, what I like to say is God's arrival. Yeah. Amen. So after Pastor got back and I got back, we jumped right into the thing with Sean Strong. And he was here that Sunday to deliver the word Sunday night. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Amen. And it was just a powerful thing. So uh, I know Sean will get this later. So. We love you. Thank you for coming. We're looking forward to you coming back. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God in heaven. You see our subject matter. I will pray in a moment. <clears throat> we have been dealing, when I was last with you, we've been discussing the ministry <coughs> of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, we had two sessions. Uh, this will be our third one tonight. And <clears throat> interesting enough, I've, I've, never, I've never taught on this, and and, and you don't hear it taught about a lot. And I've mentioned before, I like, I like ministering on subjects that you don't hear a lot, and it seems like the Spirit of God, that's the way he directs me. And uh, I love him anyway, but I love him for that, and I appreciate that. And uh, But he started dealing with, me about, with this, <coughs> obviously, a number of weeks back. Yes. And uh, so, bless God, here we go. Amen. Now, why am I taking time to talk about it before we pray and get right into it? And of course, I'm giving the viewing audience on purpose an opportunity to kind of let that whet their appetite there. Because yeah. a lot of times, too, and, uh, there's something to say for a title. And uh, people are interested in the demonic realm. And interesting enough, it also is not taught on a lot. Uh, it's not. And uh, Jesus dealt with it replete through his ministry, the ministry of Jesus Christ. He taught, obviously, throughout his entire ministry. And <clears throat> just to kind of cover shortly some old ground, we must understand that in his earthly ministry, it was about the disciples that he started with. Amen? Amen. The 12 disciples. But understand the things that they learn in the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry was, was designed, for lack of a better way to say it, in order that we could go forth with that ministry. Amen? Amen. Because when we get born into God's kingdom, Jesus, who is the word, is in us. Amen? Amen. So we are in the ministry of Jesus Christ, and you don't have to be in the five-fold ministry for that to be so. That's All right. you have to be is a born-again, spirit-filled, blessed God believer, yes. and you have all of the authority. We'll prove it out from the Word of God. Yeah. All of the authority, all of the goods, all of the enablement, blessed God, mm -hmm. given by the Spirit of God to fulfill the Great Commission and, bless God, perform not in the flesh but in the Spirit and with the help of the Holy Spirit, the aid of the Spirit of God in you, to be able to a, lay hands on sick people, bless God, they get well. Amen. Cast out the devil, bless God, don't put up with them. Yeah, Amen. That's right. Anything that Jesus did with it, well, that was Jesus. 
We've got to have our mind renewed. I say we have to have our mind renewed to the fact that it is not just limited to Jesus. Amen. Amen. He came as the Son of Man, bless God, tempted, tested in all points as we are, yet without sinning. Oh. It even goes so far as to say in the book of Hebrews, he learned obedience. Think of this. Through the things which he endured or suffered. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you start thinking about that, it's like, wow. Okay. So yeah. praise God. So what we'll do, I'm going to pray, then we'll look at our foundation scripture some other things, I'm going to lay some foundational things again because I'll be gone a few weeks, we touched on it, and uh, I'm going to encourage you too to go back and look at the other broadcasts, those of you that are subscribers, and by the way, we're still excited about that, we continue to gain them, and uh, I want you to do that. I'm going to say this too before I pray, uh, <laughs> and, and well, it's okay to say I'm proud of her because she's my wife. Amen? Amen? Terry took it upon herself, Terry Davis, and that's with an I, T-E-R-I. -E my wife took yesterday and did what we call a short, you know, these short broadcasts are neat, you know, because really YouTube is designed for that, but we go ahead and we take and record our Wednesday night Bible study because that's what we're doing. We study the Bible, go figure. Uh, basic instructions before leaving earth. But my uh, wife took and did a broadcast, I didn't know she was going to do it. In fact, I saw it pop up when I was uh, hanging out at the place I work and actually where I work is my ministry there too. Uh, I minister to people throughout the day, people get born again, people sign up sometimes for the broadcast, different things happen. And today was one of those days and she did, she took it upon herself, she had done one, one before uh, in the area of depression and really it was tied to what happens with demonic activity because two people have access in our life. Yeah. The Spirit of God, see, there's doors. Jesus even likened himself to a door. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He don't just barge in. He said, if you open it, I'll come in. I'll sup with you, hang with you, do all this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, the devil is the same way. It's called enemy access. He just don't, particularly in a born-again, spirit-filled believer, he just doesn't run in and rough shot over your life if you know who you are in Christ, amen? But we're gonna talk about some things that we discussed before that are, that are powerful. Uh, the subject, if you will, like being uh, possessed of the devil versus oppressed of the devil mm -hmm. or by the enemy, mm -hmm. okay? Well, she did it, the title of it was Depression Freedom. Depression Freedom and uh, in fact, one woman looked at it today, literally, over at the office that I work at. She was sitting with another man of God that, <clears throat> that uh, works there. And uh, uh, she ended up looking at that, and it, it went from that to just a situation where she came over, she talked to me too, and the bottom line, she just really got set free. Next thing you know, she's up, she's up, she's sharing. She's sending it to people. I mean, God just worked in that so quick. And the reason I'm bringing a rise to it is the fact that it's a confirming word, a word fitly spoken in time. She didn't know. She was compelled to do it. The Holy Spirit told her to do it. And bottom line is, here I'm going to come on the heels of this thing, and isn't it just like God to take and work on that? So uh, those of you that already subscribed to the broadcast, I encourage you to go look at it. It's only five minutes long, but it's very powerful. And uh, particularly those of you that are, that are dealing and battling with depression. I uh, will be sharing a few things tonight as an example from Derek Prince. And Derek Prince was probably, I, I feel like, he was probably one of the most authoritative uh, ministers uh, on the subject of demons and demonology and things to do with deliverance or the deliverance ministry of anybody possibly in, in our generation, for sure. Uh, there's been others. But I, I, I do believe with all my heart that he was a forerunner. There's no doubt about it. But interesting enough, why am I bringing it up before I talk about that? It's because he dealt initially with depression very much in the early part of his life. So much so he was almost suicidal. A lot of people don't know this about him. And so, uh, because he was being oppressed from the enemy and it brought, it brought depression and it brought anxiety 
and it was borderlining mental illness in his life. And everybody said, Amen. Father, I want to thank you most of all for the privilege and opportunity once again to come before these your precious sheep, not only here but worldwide. Once again, less of me, more of you. In fact, none of me and all of you. Touch my heart once again. Speak through my mouth. Let me speak the oracles of God boldly. Let the word of God flow out of me tonight in a way that you design. Let the incorruptible seed of it land on the hearts of believers, not only here but everywhere worldwide. Take up root and residency in their inner man and manifest itself into a harvest of blessings that only your word can produce in the life of a person who just chooses to believe it and receive it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Let's go ahead and look at our foundation scripture. What I did, I moved forward over to the book of Acts. <clears throat> I'd made comment before, when we opened before, you know, uh, was Jesus' ministry there talking about him over to Luke 4 and of course it's also found in Isaiah 60 about the spirit of the Lord being upon him etc cetera, etc cetera. but <clears throat> I'm moving forward and when I read it you'll see why now we had put up Acts 10 38 but uh, let's start at verse 34 and read into 38 and it'll make sense when I read it praise God in heaven when you're there say I have it I have it all right. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. I like that. He said of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Stop. Okay. We can glean something from that. With all that discourse I talked about earlier, did I not say that you don't have to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher to f flow and go and understand the principles that we learn from the ministry of Jesus Christ because he is no respecter of persons. Do you see that in your Bible? Okay. And notice, I love the way Peter puts it too. He says, I speak of a truth. Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Verse 35, but in every nation, he that feareth him got a word about that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Amen. Now, it's always been around that is Wayne is coming back, though. Yes. Yes. Another subject, but very important, because if you don't have a proper fear of God, I'm talking about being afraid of God. If you don't have a proper fear of the Lord, you're going to have a problem with the devil. Sure enough. Because you're going to definitely have a problem with your flesh. Because you don't fear him properly. Extra. My pastor always likes an extra. Therefore, there will always be one as long as he lets me talk in front of him. <laughs> Verse 35 again. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness. What, what's he work into? Righteousness or right standing with God. He does not work in unrighteousness or the works of unrighteousness, what fellowship is light with darkness. And you say, amen. amen. God works in the light. When you're born into God's kingdom, you're made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but he also wants you to live right. Amen. amen. And, and here's the result of it, the fruit of it, is accepted with him. Those that worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Verse 36, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, or the anointing one and his anointing. He is Lord of all. See that? I love that too. We always, or I do, I drive on the point that Jesus is Lord. Though we're not on it fully, understand if you don't want to have a problem with the devil, I said if you don't want to have a problem with the enemy and his cohorts, you can't just get the salvation. I want the fire insurance, but bump the lordship business. Yeah. No. You know, no. Let I want your salvation, but let me serve you on my own terms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, this is what Lucifer tried to do, and uh, he found out that wasn't gonna work. That's right. Yeah. After eons went by, but one day he rose up in one of these my way ministries. Mm -hmm. And the big eye thing going, and pride lifted up, and he wanted to just, uh, thought he was just going to parade in and out, yeah. you know, in heaven and do whatever he wanted to do. And it's like people do now in the world. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay to follow the Holy Ghost? Sure enough. Get off notes for a minute. Sure 
I like what I said before, people think, and I'm talking to born again folk, because the better part of all of last year, nothing's changed. The Spirit of God has been having me deal and talk to primarily the body of Christ at large. Obviously, nothing comes out of my mouth because I back it with the Word of God that will not minister to a lost person. They hear it. Look, the Bible is very clear. No man comes to the Spirit of God unless the Spirit of God draws him. The Spirit of God is involved in order. You can't even get born again without him, period. That's right. You can't do nothing without him. Surely. Even Jesus talked about the Father. He said, apart from me, I do nothing. So we gotta get that straight. So the bottom line is they want to per they, they just parade through this life, go up and say a prayer, and parade through this life any way they want, and then that's just gonna, you know, uh, dance right into heaven. You got another thing coming. You're not gonna hear the words you want to hear. Is it okay to obey the Spirit of God? Always. Is we're still dealing with demons, yes, sir. I hear you clearly. The reason he had me say that, because even me sometimes, these things will come out of my mouth. I'm like, why are you having me go there? You know? Because demonic activity is in play. This is what makes born-again folk act like the devil. <laughs> Amen. Because they may not be possessed of the devil, but they're influenced by him. They, have, they open a door. And he has to work through a physical body, just mm -hmm. like God does. Mm -hmm. This is this is what gives him expression, if you will, in the world. Look at all the evil in the world. It's done through people. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. The whole curse business with animals killing one and all this stuff happens in the animal kingdom and you know in the earth and plants dying and growing and all that. Well, that was part of the fall. Let's God that'll be there when we get a new heaven, new earth. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to good and evil, you notice it's always done through a person. Yes. That's because you have two entities or two powers, yes, sir, two powers that work through people. The devil and his cohorts, the reason I say it that way, because Pastor made a very, very good point one time. Uh, you know, Satan... Uh, can't be everywhere, as he put it, you know, you're, maybe you're not that important, you follow me, that he's just going to spend all his time focused on you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you something, a third of the heavens rebelled with him. Mm -hmm. He's got plenty of help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Um, so, yeah, we'll leave it at that. <clears throat> so, at any rate, hopefully you got something out of that. The Lord wanted it out there. Yes, sir. It's for somebody. I'm going to do this. I'm going to obey him. Somebody's watching this broadcast right now. Get this straight. God loves you. He's not upset with you. Jesus died for you. Sins, known, on whatever, everything. Past, present, future, the whole bit. But the bottom line is, he does require you to repent. Okay? Return unto him, and he'll return unto you. Okay? The okay. devil's running a rough shot over your life. I know it now. I'm hearing the Spirit of God. You know it. I know it. God knows it. But here's the good news, and the good news is the gospel. Amen. You can be free, because yeah. whom the sun sets free, bless God's free indeed. You say amen. 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 All right. Wow. Let's see if we can get through the scripture. Praise the Lord. Verse 37. That word, and Jesus, of course, is the word, I say you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now, we had an extensive talk about that on the onset of this teaching, how that the forerunner, his cousin John, the Baptist, yeah. uh, all he talked was repentance. That's right. Make straight path, make a way for the Lord. Repent first, for the kingdom of God is at hand. There's one coming greater than me. I'm not, you know, his humility spoke this wise, and I'm not even, you know, worthy to lash his sandals, et cetera, et cetera. We've heard the story, some haven't. But this is the deal. Prior to Jesus showing up on the scene. So even here in the book of Acts, which I call launch, because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John understand this, is an account of the life and ministry and teachings 
of Jesus Christ. Amen. Understand that. And that even they, those four gospels are written for us. They're written for the believer. Yeah. The New Testament is written to the believer. Yes, amen. You must understand that. The Old Covenant is written for the believer, if you will. Mm -hmm. Okay? God left it in his word because we needed to we needed to see all that. We needed to learn about that. Oh, yeah. But see, we have a new covenant, a new contract based on better promises. Hallelujah. And so that's why it's written to the believer in the new covenant because we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Do you follow me? Yes, indeed. Amen. Yes, amen. After the cross is why. Old Testament, pre-cross. Oh, that's right, that's right. Do you understand that? Yes. It's very critical that you do understand it. Verse 37 once again. That word I say you know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. That's what he preached. Verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. See he was the anointed one of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and notice with power now look what he did with that Holy Ghost and power, okay? Who went about doing good, number one, we serve a good God. He went about doing it good. And healing all that were oppressed of who? The devil. Go figure. Of the devil, for God was with him. Let it sink him. Turn back, let's do this again. We'll go back to Mark's gospel, the first chapter. We'll look a little bit of word. I got notes up here at Chose a Horse. <laughs> I asked God and I, I said, Lord, <laughs> and he, he's doing it. Help me. <laughs> but we'll get some of it. Because I do want to, I do want to uh, share some of these commentaries before we close tonight. But as I'd shared at the opening of this teaching when I got on the ministry of Jesus Christ, the Lord had pulled back on the reins, and He told me uh, to to slow down. Which those that know me know that's a challenge for Brother Jim. Amen. Yeah. My middle sister says I'm like a Ferrari with bicycle brakes. <laughs> when I preach. <laughs> Glory to God. The Jimmy, the only guy that can, you know, quote 40 scriptures in one hour <laughs> and expect everybody to follow it. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Took the word to save us, going to take the word to keep us. Amen? Amen. All right, look here. Let's see where I want to break in, man. Because I'm going to prove something out. We looked at this before, but I'm going to show you something here. Boom. All right, we'll do this. I almost want to start at verse 1, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. What we'll do, let's just, on Mark's gospel, let's go ahead and start at verse 9. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, we already heard about him being over there, right? and was baptized of John in Jordan. He baptized him in the Jordan River. Now this becomes important because I'm going to share something. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to get ahead a little bit. When Jesus got baptized in the River Jordan, he come up out of that filled with the Spirit. The dove was just symbolic coming down that he got filled with the Holy Ghost. He got filled with the Spirit. But immediately right after that, of course, I'm going to read it and prove it. Right after that, he goes off with his wilderness experience, goes up into the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. To guess what? To have a confrontation with the devil, with Satan, yeah, yeah. the main guy. Because Jesus is the main man. Mm -hmm. So we have the two opposing forces, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light against the kingdom of darkness. 
and the prince of the power of this air and the God, in fact, of this world system or the world because God, because Adam turned it over to him. Adam and Eve did. That's your X Street, but it's a bona fide fact. All right. Yes, yeah, so that happened. But we find that when he came down off of that mountain, see, he went up full of the Holy Ghost, right? Yes. But he came down in the, he went up in the Spirit, but he came down in the power of the Spirit. Yeah. And that power of the Spirit came after he dealt with the devil. Mm -hmm. And the power and your spirit of life will be when you learn how to deal with the devil. There's another extra. Verse 10, straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descended upon him. Verse 11, and there came a voice from heaven saying, thou art my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 12, and immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Notice he was led by the spirit up into the wilderness. Not by the power, he was led and the Bible teaches us that when we're born again, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. Okay? So he was first led of the Spirit to go do this. It was an assignment. That's right. Verse 13, and there and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of who? Satan. Is it behind me? Because I have been looking. To be tempted of Satan. Well, like I said earlier, he was tempted and tested in all points as we are yet without sinning. Praise God. And we'll see too, he used the word against the enemy. And we're to do that too. Of course, he was the word incarnate, if you will. And was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him. The Father sent angels to minister unto him. Yeah, because you and say, aren't they all ministering spirits? The Bible says who are sent to minister for those. I hear him, who are heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. No difference. We have the same benefit. Fact, they go to they work for us like they work for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. They're employed. Do you know you have many of them assigned to you? A lot of them you've never put one to work in your life. <laughs> I feel that Sean, that Sean Strong spirit coming on me. I got to be careful. God forbid you hand me a microphone and a sweat rag. I might, I might just go wild on you up in here. Go ahead. Go ahead on right here. Go ahead. Go ahead on what you said. Yeah, because he was with a wild beast and angels ministering unto him. Verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, by Herod, right? Yeah. Jesus came into Galilee, watch this, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And we need to know what that is. And yeah. saying, the time, this is 15, and the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Look, repent ye and believe the gospel. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now look at this. We'll continue on, verse 16. We're going to read it. We're really going to get into the meat of it when we get to verse 21. But we'll go on and read. Because this has to do with his first disciples. Disciples, notice. And the word disciples is a derivative too of discipline. The discipline life. Consecrated to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Verse 16. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers, or they were professional fishermen. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you how to fish and get men born into the kingdom, bless God. Hallelujah. The ministry of Jesus Christ. I know y'all hear that rolling thunder. I'm glad the camera and the noise picking it up. That's right. That's the thunder of the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> His voice is like the thunderings in many waters. Praise God in heaven. Verse 18. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Notice too, there's no delayed obedience here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -uh. Right away, 
They just did it. Verse 19, And when he had gone a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Verse 20, And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And as I've said before, it shows right there they weren't broke, busted, and disgusted, but they walked away from all of it. They forsook it all. People that's got hired servants have got, the, uh, you know, or hired help, they were professional fishermen. They left them there in the boat. They weren't broke. That's an extra. But it'll still preach. Now, verse 21 is getting to the meat of it. Now, I want you to understand that we are in Mark's gospel or Mark's account. That's what you need to think about. This is Mark's account, okay, of what's happening that he beheld and it got pinned and put down for us. Do you follow that? And here it goes. We're only in verse 21 in the first chapter of the book of Mark. And let's see what Jesus is up to right out of the gate. And they went to Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day entered into a synagogue and taught. That's verse 21. Notice he entered into the synagogue and he taught. This is why instruction, this is why teaching is so important. All of the ministry gifts are important. But Jesus, though he was the anointed one, he was the Messiah. Bless God, the son of a living God. Jesus taught more in his ministry than anything else. He was continually teaching. Why was he teaching it to them? Because he wanted to get a hold of it and learn how the kingdom of God operates. Amen. So he went to the synagogue and taught, verse 22, and they were astonished at his doctrine. I love that. Say, his doctrine. Now what you have today, you got a lot of false doctrine out there mm -hmm. or you got people that get a little, little learned, they get a little bit of knowledge, yeah. which knowledge puffs up if you're not careful yeah. and, and then all of a sudden they start turning it into their own doctrine mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. reading what they believe instead of uh, in other words, reading their doctrine instead of reading the word of God and believing what they read. They read what they believe instead of reading what to believe. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. So see, they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority, very important, and not as the scribes or not as the religious people. Amen. Verse 23, and there, was, and there was in their synagogue a man, uh oh, here we go, with an unclean spirit. And cried out, saying, verse 24, Let us alone, what are we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Are thou come to destroy us? I know thou that thou art, look, the Holy One of God. Thank you. What happened, the reason they recognized that right away, there's two things, primarily three really. Not only him, but they recognize the anointing and also his holiness. Amen. You understand? They understood that. They feared that. And they will in you too if you live a holy life. If you understand who you are in Christ, and that means if you're in Christ, you're in the anointing one, and his anointing is in you. If you learn who you are, you live a consecrated life, you can have authority, you do have authority over all the works of the enemy. That's right. Period. Glory. He said, you come to destroy us. I know that thou art the Holy One of God. Jesus, look here, verse 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Notice he didn't get into a debate or nothing with him. Right away, shut up and come out of him. Yeah, he didn't have the other guy. He didn't even let the other man speak. Shut your mouth talking to the devil, mm -hmm. the unclean spirit in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You know who I am, and I know who you are. You come out now. Yes. Not later, mister, as Norval would say. That's right. 
And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. In other words, he said, You be quiet and you come out of me. Verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Notice it was a tearing away. This is why a lot of times you hear all these screams and different things happen when these tormenting or different unclean spirits come out of a person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop here and say something because he wants me to. The other reason that we're on this, and we're going to be on in a minute for sure. We're going to be on in a while. A, it's not taught. But B, here's the deal. Because it's not taught like other things that are not taught. And we just saw that Jesus taught everywhere, right? Amen. Here's what happens when they manifest in our midst. People don't know what to do with them. Because they haven't been instructed. They don't know what to do. And now, in this end time harvest period, more than ever, you're going to see more and more of it. It's going to happen in the middle of the assembly and people in churches that do, uh, that do not know how to deal with this and do not have an understanding okay, of it, they're going to have a problem. And the, and the sad reality is here's the real problem. People want help and they want deliverance. They want to be delivered and they'll go and come into the house of God, which is God's hospital, but they don't. they go out the same. Jesus did not go to the cross and do all he did there. He did not spend three and a half years in his ministry teaching and preaching how the kingdom of God operates in order for then, and, and we got acts moving forward, which I call launch, right. only for nothing to change. Amen. For people to fall back into a religious state Make it a ritual, just come to church, hear a few songs, da 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 da, da worship the Lord some, hear, hear some kind of certain, go home, and they're not changed. That's right. Is it odd if I just obey? Always. Not like I signed up for this. He's made it very, yeah, very clear to me why he wants us out there. So verse 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed. Yeah, that's what happens if it happens in our church today. And so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, notice plural, and they do obey him. Verse 28, and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. I guess so. You say, man, amen. turn to Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. We'll start at verse 1. Luke at chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Here we go again. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. Of who? The yeah. devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and of course he fasted, when uh, when they were ended. And of course afterwards he was hungry. You think so? He hadn't eaten nothing in 40 days. Verse 3, And the devil said unto him, Notice too, now he's going to strike at a weak point in his flesh. His spirit wasn't hungry. He was the anointing when he went up there full of the Holy Ghost. What had nothing wrong with his soul? Amen. His body needed nourishment. So the yeah. devil put his finger right on that first. Mm -hmm. And he would do the same thing with you and I. Yes, he will. He will. Please never forget that. Amen. This is why learning about the reason I'm pausing, I'm not listening. This is why learning, it's not enough to learn just about the things of the Spirit. We have to learn about the lust of the flesh. Amen. We have to learn about things that derail us in the kingdom of God. Sure we have to, yes sir, we have to learn about the tactical maneuvers of the enemy. Sean Strong used an illustration, ironically, I had used utilized it one time too many years ago in a teaching I did, a little different. 
but it bears the same thought. He used boxing as an analogy. In my analogy, many years ago, I was teaching in this particular church, don't matter where, but I was doing it. Good figure. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord had me articulate it this way. He said, you know, when these boxers, particularly championship type boxers, are training for a fight, it doesn't matter if it's a middleweight or heavyweight, it doesn't matter. But they're, they're, they're going for the championship of the world, if you will. When they train, they do more than just run, beat the bag, work out physically. They spend hours looking at what is known as training films. They do the same thing in football. But the boxer will look at his opponent on these films at the other fights You know that he's fought. You know why? Because he needs to know how to bring the fight to the fight. This is the way it is in spiritual things and in the kingdom of God. If you are ignorant of the devices of the devil and you don't know how to bring the fight to the fight, he'll kick your butt. He certainly will. But it's, it don't have to be so. That's right. No. No. So he was hungry, verse 3, and the devil said unto him, see, he put his finger on it, if thou be the son of God, now he's wanting to question to who he is, command these stones that be made to bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, notice he didn't get in some peeing contest with him, he told him, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. He started quoting him the word of God. Verse 5, and the devil, now taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. It was Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. He let him know. He said, it's cool. It's going to be all right. Don't you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? Mm. Now, come on, man. Let's forget about it. Let's break this religious thing off. That was good in any house of God. Verse 6, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Well, where did he get it? I said it earlier. He got it in the garden when they disobeyed. All authority, everything was given them, all dominion to take it, have dominion over it, run it. God made them stewards, caretakers. They had the whole thing. He asked them to do one simple thing. Don't mess with this one tree. And we had a teaching on that. I, I, you need to go back and look at that. Good, pleasant, desirable, I think was the title. Yeah. yeah. He took that which appeared to be good. It was pleasant to the eye. It was desirable. Yeah. yeah. He used that to Connor. Connor. Mm -hmm. I say her. Yeah. First. And then, of course, Adam, he comes along. Forget about it. When I think about it, man, oh, my God, the trouble it's caused. This is why the study and the understanding of obedience versus disobedience is so important. You'll never, to the day you give up this physical body, you'll deal with it. Paul said, I put my body under. I cruise, I die daily. Amen. Are you getting off track with the devil? No, I'm not, because if you don't do those things, you will not defeat the work of the enemy in your life. Right. He'll run rush out of you. The devil sent unto him that all the power had been given to him. He said, I can give it whoever I want. It's a paraphrase because it was gave to me. Verse 7. If thou will, that, uh, will worship me, see, now he's wanting him to worship him. He wanted that in heaven, okay? He was the worship leader in heaven. <laughs> How about that? And God made him so. And he was perfect because God don't mess stuff up in all his ways till iniquity was found in him. He got lifted in pride. The rebellion occurred. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. Of course, he's lying. Even if he'd have done it, he wouldn't have given it to him. Because he's the father of lies. Yeah. Can't tell the 
See, that's the extra. Matter of fact, I never heard of it before. I just got that from God, from the Father. He was lying. He's a father of lies. Even if Jesus would have came to that, he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't give it to him. I never thought about it that way before. Verse 8, Jesus answered and said unto me, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only, and him shall thy serve. Verse 9, And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, now he's doing it again, say, Cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. Verse 11, And in their hands they shall bear thee up lest it, that you should dash your foot against a stone. Verse 12. And Jesus answering him again, notice how he always answered him with this way. He said unto him, he said he used his mouth, it is said thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Verse 15, 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Now, to back up what I said earlier about returning in the power of the Spirit. He went up full of the Spirit. Look at the next verse. Look at 14. And Jesus returned after all this, look here, in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. And he taught, there he goes again in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, which is in Isaiah 60. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Well, who's holding them captive? And recovery of sight to the blind, those that are spiritually blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, verse 20, and he gave it back to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And verse 21, and he began to say unto them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ear hearing. Bless God, I'm here now, here we go. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's go now to the back of the book. Let's go back over to Mark. Look at look at uh, Mark. Let's go back to Matthew, Mark. Yep. Let's go to chapter 16. Let's go to the end of the book. Mm -hmm. Now remember I read to you what happened right out of the gate in Mark's account with his ministry. Look at the end of it. Look, let's break it at verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel all right, to every creature, to everybody. 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. You know what that means. Verse 17, And these signs, oh, really? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. That's the first thing he said that, that would happen. We're going to read the rest of it. It's behind me, and they shall speak with new tongues. Is that what it says behind me? Will that be looking? Yeah, yeah, amen. The first thing he said is, you're going to deal with a devil, and you're going to cast him out. Amen. In my name. We'll finish reading it, and we'll probably close there. I just get into this other stuff later. I got some good things to share, though. But I'm gonna obey the Lord and not go too busy. I hear him on this. Let me tell you something. Death is a spirit too. Now, understand that doesn't mean that everybody that's dying. That doesn't mean that everybody that's dying. Because here's what it's appointed once to every man or woman to die. Then there's the judgment or rebuking or settling of accounts whether it be the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. This here, this is this, because this here is not born again. It's corruptible. Now you'll get a new one. That's the good news. Hallelujah. We get one that's incorruptible. We're going to get a new body. Amen. We can go get a new heaven and a new earth. Go figure. Yeah. I was looking at this phenomenal thing about Dubai, uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi the other day, and it is incredible, all the things that they've built and done and all that. But then I'm sitting there, because I, I did get captivated. Normally I don't look at it, I just come across it. 
and it got so intriguing, and it was just, man, the things that they built and done, and the aesthetics, and all, just, it's just absolutely nuts. Of course, they got more money, it's just, they got stupid money, right? Mm -hmm. The Lord just as clear. After about five minutes into that thing, he said, yeah, I'm going to do every bit of it. Yeah. One, we all know they won't take none of it with them. He said, but secondly, I'm going to burn it all up. All right. I'm going to get rid of every bit of it. They're working, their, they're working their tail off of it. They're getting all that done. He said, I'm going to get rid of every bit of it. It's going to be a new heaven, new earth, the whole bit. Glory. The point I'm going to make, I'm going to do this in closing. I didn't know I was going to do it, but bless God, he wants me to do it. Yeah. Let's talk about, we're talking about demonic activity. The devil, John 10.10, 10, if we put that up, John 10.10 10 says this. I didn't finish reading, but I read enough in Mark 16. Of course, it did go on to say the Lord working with them. Okay. Amen. Yeah, I do need to finish it. Okay. I will, then I'm going to say what he wants me to say in close. He signs will follow them, believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. We're back in Mark in verse 17, and they shall speak with new tongues. 18, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, this is what's strong. Check it out. It's all strong. Verse 19. So then after the Lord has spoken that unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And guess what? He's still there. Amen. And his blood sat down on the mercy seat. His righteousness, the right hand were uh, yeah, in first righteousness anyway in the right hand of God look 20 and they went forth and did something you see that and they went forth and preached everywhere like Jesus and the Lord working with them yeah. who worked with them the Lord worked with them and what he worked with what he taught them and he worked with his word because he is the word with them and confirming the word with signs following amen amen you see why I had, to, I, I had to finish up? Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I was on that airplane, Pastor prayed for me. And the church sent me out, but in particular, Pastor Ronnie prayed for me. Yeah. <clears throat> he kind of was a. I was praying to go out, but he specifically, in the middle of that prayer, praying for me. He said, Father, too, he said, let Jimmy be seated where he's supposed to be seated on this flight. Yes. Going and coming. Amen. S -s have him seated. Seat him by the people or a person or the people that you would have him to be with. Yeah. Pray that prayer. Well, I get on this plane. But some of you watching this have not heard this testimony. I had a woman, an elderly woman, because I'm going to give the short version, that basically passed away on this airplane. I went and got help. I went through all the normal protocol. A divine calm, if you will, came over me, because normally I'd be freaking out too, because everybody was, particularly her son. Mm -hmm. Why are you bringing this up? Because the Lord wants me to. Amen. Interesting enough, I didn't get into a thing, let's all get in agreement, let's hold hands, let's do all this. None of this. I mean, let me tell you something. At 650 miles an hour, 30,000 feet in the air, probably over Iceland or somewhere, you don't have have time for that. That's right. What you don't do, what you better do is Mark 16, 15 through 20. The Spirit of God spoke up on the inside of me. After I'd done the normal thing, check breathing, check pulse, blah, 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 the woman is dead. It's just cut to the chase. The Spirit of God just as plain on the inside of me spoke up and said, look, I want you to do two things. Number one, he did not say, I want you to pray for her. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with praying for people. Well, we got a dead woman here. Thank you. His son's crying. He's falling apart. You think it's his mom. That's right. He said, you lay your right hand on the crown of her head you take your left hand, I want you to raise it up to me. But the first, you're going to do two things. He said, I, I sense the anointing of right now, now that I have, I'm telling you. Yeah. The power of God is in my hand right now. Mm -hmm. He's bringing it back. Yes. Hallelujah. He 
said, I want you to take, you take and you speak. He didn't tell me to pray for it. He said, if you, I want you to speak to that spirit of death and I want you to command it to come off of her body, to leave her body in Jesus in yeah. my son's name. Yeah. And I raise her up. He said, but with your other hand, I want you to worship me and mm -hmm. thank me for doing it yeah. while I do it. Yeah. I made him. I did just like what he said. Amen. I said, you spirit of death, I command you to get your hands off of this, this woman. She'll live and not die. Right. She will not die in her son's arms on this plane. I command her to live and not die in Jesus' name. And then I, on the other hand, I looked up, oh, Lord, in oh, tears, and I thank you. I said, I worship you. I thank you, Lord, Amen. for not letting her die. I felt the compassion, Amen. this overwhelming compassion come upon me. Really? Thank you for not letting her die in her son's arms on this plane. And then I stepped away and I looked at her and her head was laid back like this in the back of the seat because she'd been falling around like a wet dishcloth. Yeah. And I looked at her and her eyes were still closed. The next thing you know, I seen her eyes start rolling around behind her eyelids. And about five seconds later, her eyes popped open. And then another few seconds later, she went, <gasps> and air come back in her lungs. Hallelujah. And bless God that she does this. She didn't look at him, son's over here. She looked over at me. Right. And then what the Lord showed me later, she wasn't seeing me. She was seeing him. Amen. He was there. Yes, Jesus. And God raised her from the dead. Hallelujah. Because I acted Amen. on the scripture. Right on. And everybody said, Believe Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Beloved, so the next time we get together around God's word, something I want to leave you with. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it is all hard work. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 10, that with the mouth, confession is made and salvation is done this way. If a man or woman will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth Jesus is Lord, they shall be saved. For with the heart a man believes, or a woman believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And that whosoever, that qualifies everybody, will call upon the name of the Lord, bless God, shall be saved. And you'll not only get born again into God's kingdom, like he talked about, you believe you'll make heaven not be damned and go to hell. But on top of it, you'll be endowed with power from on high, bless God. All you've got to do then is get in this word and find out who you are in Christ Amen. Jesus, and he'll do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think, and he's going to do it according to his power that will be at work in you. Amen. So to the next time, bless God, we get together around God's word, I want you to remember something. God loves you with all his heart. We love you here at Cornerstone, and my Jesus, bless God, is Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God.